This video will all be about editing a waterfall image using Lightroom for the basic raw adjustments and later on we will switch over to Photoshop for some final post-processing fine-tuning the editing. Feel free to follow along the editing tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. Let's expand the basic panel for the basic raw adjustments. First, I want this shot to be really, really vibrant with fresh green tones and a hint of blue in it. I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just to bring up the base saturation already. Next up, let's work on the tonal adjustments. Right away, you can see the images on the darker side of things, but I want to further make it darker by bringing down the exposure. So I'm going to drop the exposure to right around here. The reason is, at this point, I do have really nice detail in the waterfall itself. That's really, really important because I want to have some nice visible structure in here. Of course, I don't want the image to be super dark. To change that, I'm going to bring up the shadows and I'm also going to raise the blacks and I'm going to raise them quite a lot. This not only will preserve details in the very darkest parts of the image, this will also help create a very soft, dreamy look for the image as we reduce the overall contrast right here. And besides making this shot super vibrant, I also want to have this glowy, dreamy effect on top. So raising the shadows and blacks really helps for that. So I'm still not happy with the details of the waterfall. So I'm going to bring down the highlights and hopefully we can get back some more structure from it. So I would say that's looking pretty good. At this point, the waterfall does become too dark, but don't worry about that. We are going to change that light on with a little bit of masking. For now, what I want to do as well is to bring up the texture. And again, for the dreamy effect, I'm going to bring down the clarity, which will make everything softer, obviously. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze, adding some kind of hazy look on top of everything. Okay. I do think we need to slightly tweak the white balance. What I mean by that is I'm going to bring up the temperature so just so we don't overwhelm everything with blue color tones. Just want to kind of neutralize all the blue color cast in here. But again, I don't want to go too crazy and make it too warm. At the same time, I do want to bring down the tint and bringing down the tint will give us some fresher green tones as we boost the green colors right here. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. What I want to do as well is to bring up the vibrance and that's basically it for the basic adjustment. So let's compare to before. You can see we do have a lot more detail in the darkest areas of the image. And also we do have more details in the highlights of the waterfall itself. So the exposure looks really, really good already. Now we want to focus on a few areas locally. And as always, we're going to do that with masking. So let's head out of the basic panel and open up the masking tool. Now in earlier versions of Lightroom, targeting a waterfall like this was a little bit tricky, but luckily for us, we do have a new mask called Landscape. So let's click on that. This new mask will automatically detect the water in this image. So all I need to do is click this checkbox right here and let's click on Create Mask. First off, I only want to work on the waterfall itself. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of the water below it. Just like that. That's a perfect selection. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add a lot of texture which will make the details of this waterfall even finer. I'm also going to bring up the clarity for the same effect. Just not going too crazy with the clarity because this looks really, really strange really fast. All right, that's looking good so far. I'm also going to bring up the shadows. This will reveal even more details as we're making the darker parts of the waterfall brighter. So let's say like this. I still think we could tickle out a little bit more brightness. So let's bring up the exposure. I don't want to add too much exposure. Otherwise, we might end up with clipping in the waterfall. And that's not what we want. We just want, want to get out a little more brightness. I also think the water right below the waterfall is way too bright. And it's kind of distracting. So let's fix that. I'm using another landscape mask. And again, we want to choose the water checkbox right here and click create mask. Then we are going to further modify this mask by subtracting a linear gradient. And this time we are simply going to get rid of the waterfall like this. Perfect. The first thing I want to do is to make it darker. And I'm going to use the dehaze of which will add contrast and we get more details which lie below the water surface. So that's really, really good. I do think I also want to bring up the clarity for the same purpose. You can see we get some more structure in here. Of course, this will also make it kind of 
brighter even. So I want to change that. I'm going to drop the exposure very gently. And I'm even going to add a bit of contrast just to make it darker and give this area more punch. So something like this looks pretty good. We have toned down the brightness, but we also have added some more details in this area, making it look just a bit more interesting, I would say. Next up, I do want to apply some kind of dodging to the image. So let me use another landscape mask. This time I'm choosing the vegetation one and let's click on create mask. Here with this mask, I want to emphasize some of these highlights in the image. The mask as it is right now is way too much. So I'm going to click on those three dots and I'm choosing intersect mask with and choose brush. Now with the brush, I'm painting over the areas which I want to make brighter. So I want to give this edge right here just some more highlights and the fern in the foreground as well. So maybe like this and this part right here, I would say. Okay, let's see if this works. In here, all I need to do for the dodging is to bring up the exposure, giving these areas in particular a summer brightness. So I would say this is looking pretty good. All right, I like it. Next up, let's introduce a bit of glow above the waterfall. Therefore, let's use a radial gradient. And I'm covering pretty much everything on top of the waterfall. I'm also making sure the center of this radial gradient lies outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And then let's see. To add the glow effect, I'm going to further reduce the contrast in this area. What this means is I'm going to raise the blacks. I'm also going to slightly raise the shadows. We could even bring down the contrast slider itself. This helps a lot. Also, this not only will reduce the contrast, but it will make the area brighter, making it look like there's some light coming down from just above the waterfall, which I think looks great. I do think I also want to bring down the dehaze quite a bit, making this really, really soft up there. Okay, nice. Now the colors do seem a little bit off, so I'm using the temperature and tint slider to fix that. I want the glow effect to be colder and, more, and greener, so I'm going to bring down the temperature, introducing some more coldness. And at the same time, I'm bringing down the tint so we get some rich green tones in that area. Perfect. Then finally, let me use one more radial gradient with which I will be covering pretty much the main part in the center of the image like this. I'm also going to rotate it a bit to fit the line of the waterfall and the water. Then I'm going to invert it. Therefore, we want to click on that invert checkbox. And now I'm going to very gently bring down the exposure and this way we're just creating a very precise vignetting effect and this will help us focus the viewer's eye on the center and the subject in the center. Beautiful. So that's the image of the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks. So that's from before to after. Much better with much more focus on the waterfall. So that's exactly what we want. Next up, let's do some color grading. There's not much going on, but I want to start in the color mixer and I want to change the saturation first. I want the green tones to be super fresh and saturated. So I'm going to bring up the green saturation here. And I do think I want to tone down the blues just a little bit because I think the waterfall is a bit too blueish. So that's looking much better. We can also go into the luminance tab to adjust the brightness of these color tones. So we can bring up the green luminance, which will make the green tones of the image brighter. We could even bring up the blue tones. Let's see what this will do. Just giving a little more brightness to the waterfall, just a bit like this, okay. But I really don't wanna overdo it in the color mixer. What I want to do instead is to go into the color grading panel for some split toning. Here, I don't want to change the highlights because that would mostly affect the waterfall and I like how it looks at the moment. So I'm using the midtones and the shadows to add color to this image. For the shadows, I want to choose a, a mixture of a blue and green color tone. Or oh, actually, let's go with the green tone like this. And I'm going to very gently raise the saturation. Just to have a hint of green in the shadows. Then I'm going to the midtones. And for the midtones, I do want to use a cold color tone. The reason here is there are some midtones in the waterfall. And using a cold color tone will just emphasize these. So let's bring up the saturation again. I'm just using tiny amounts of saturation because I really don't want to overdo it here with the split toning, but that's looking really, really good. Now, the final thing I want to do in regards of the color grading 
I want to open up the calibration tab down below and I just want to push the saturation some more like this. Beautiful. Let's do the sharpening in the details panel. As always, I'm going to reduce the radius all the way down, increase the details all the way up. Then we are going to hold down the Alt key while applying the masking adjustments. Since we have a lot of details in this image, the masking will not be as helpful as for my other images, but this is looking good. Then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done with the Lightroom part. Well, almost, because I have a second image I need to work on. Right here in the foreground, due to the long exposure I used, you can see the fern is kind of blurry and I want to change that. So we're going to use this image with a different exposure time and we're going to blend those two images together to get a sharper image. So we need to synchronize these two. I'm going to click on our base image right here, then hold down the control key and click on the second image to select both of them. Then we want to hit the synchronize button right here. Make sure to check all and click synchronize. Now we have the same editing settings on both images and we can start merging them in, in Photoshop. So right click on one of them, go to edit in and then we want to choose open as layers in Photoshop. All right, and there we have both images. First off, I want to align those two just to be a little more precise. So let's select both of them, go to edit and choose auto align layers and hit OK. So that's looking much better as you can see. Now we need to mask in the sharper areas from our second layer right here. I'm going to start things with a black layer mask. Therefore, hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon, which will create a black layer mask. Then grab the brush tool by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white, make the brush size a little bit bigger and reduce the hardness of the brush. Now with that right brush, I'm going to paint over on that layer mask. So if I paint over the foreground right here, we will reveal the sharper fern from the second layer. And this way I'm painting my way through the image everywhere where I want to sh have sharper results. So I also want to paint over the water, I guess. Here it's just about zooming in a lot and kind of work your way through the image. We don't want to introduce any softness. so these rocks would be very soft using the second image on them as you can see. But other than that, I think it looks good. So what I want to do next is to add a little stronger glow effect on top. I'm going to merge everything for that. So let's hit Control Shift Alt E, which will create a new layer. With this new layer, I'm going up into the filter menu. Here we're going to the blur menu and choose Gaussian blur. I'm going with a radius around 50 pixels and hit OK. Then Go to the edit menu once more and hit fade Gaussian blur. First off, I'm going to change the mode from normal to lighten. Then we're going to bring down the opacity to our liking. So I want to have a really, really strong glow effect. I think I'll go with an opacity around 25% and hit OK. Now I don't want the darker parts of the image to be affected by the glow. So I'm going to right click on the glow layer, go to the blending options, and then we're going to use blend if. I'm not going into details of how this works because it's kind of strange, but what we want to do is to hold down the Alt key and click on the right part of this arrow and we're going to drag it up. And as we drag it up, less and less of the dark areas will be affected by the glow effect. So that's a great way to mask out shadows from it. Let's go with something like this. Okay, and that's looking super good already. Then. Let's merge everything one more time. I'm hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E again, which will create a new layer. Now I don't think this image is even. I want to change that. I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation control points. Now I'm going to hold down Ctrl and I'm going to click on that point in the bottom left corner. I want to pull it a little bit further to the side because I want to straighten these trees in the back. I can also like pick the point in the top left corner and drag it a little further to the right side. So like this until those trees in the distance are straight. Okay. And when I deactivate these layers in the back, you can see we do have a gap right here. I'm going to fix that again. I'm hitting control T then right click and choose warp. With the warp tool, we can just drag the image like this, filling all the gaps we have created. And you can see the trees are getting uneven again. So I'm going to drag them into the opposite direction. All right, that's looking good. 
at this point I want to get out some more details from a few areas. So let me duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then I'm using a plugin which is a paid plugin but it's really really useful for this case and I want to show you the whole editing process so that's part of it. I'm going to the filter menu and I'm going to use the Nick Collection plugin which is really really helpful and I'm using the Color Effects Pro 4 effect. In here what I'm going to use is a, is a filter called Detail Extractor. You can see right out of the gate it looks super super weird and way too overdone. I'm going to bring up the contrast which will tone down the brightness a bit. At the same time I'm going to dial down the detail extractor a bit and I'm just playing around with these settings until I get something that looks good. Very important I just focus on the areas which I want to make richer in detail. So the waterfall and maybe those rocks right here. So I think those settings are looking good. Let's hit OK. Again, we have the issue that this effect is overlaying the whole image. So we're going to apply a black layer mask once more. Hold on the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon. Then again, use a white brush and select the layer mask. Then let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to paint over all the areas where I want to have more details. So if I paint over this rock right here, you can see we can introduce more details to very specific areas. Same goes for this waterfall right here. And I'm brushing along this edge, just making it look a bit more interesting. All right, that's looking great. Let me deactivate this layer real quick so we can see the difference from before to after. Beautiful. Then let's merge everything again, hitting Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E. And I think I want to apply a little more glow. Again, I'm using the Nick Collection plugin. So let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. So for that glow effect, I'm using the classical soft focus filter. You see, this works really, really great for images like this. We can play around with the method. I'm going to choose a different soft focus method. I think I'm going with the third preset here. And I do want to bring down the strength a bit like this, maybe. Okay, let's apply it like this. All right, that's looking awesome. Again, I do want to mask out a few areas. so. Let me start with the black layer mask once more. Again, choose a white brush and I'm going to brush in a little local glow just above the waterfall right here. And I think that should be it for editing this image. So this video was a little more advanced with a little more Photoshop editing. Of course, this will make the video longer, but maybe this will be interesting for some of you. Let me know what you think of it. Maybe I will record more videos like that in the future. Just keep in mind when in Photoshop I like using a lot of paid plugins, which just make the life easier and more efficient when editing. So I hope this video will help you with your waterfall images. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.